That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. As of this moment, humanity only knows how to get into space one way, and that's by riding rockets. From Yuri Gagarin's famous first flight into orbit, to the US's future plans of sending astronauts back into space later just this year, one thing remains constant, the way we get there. Four, three, two, one. And liftoff of Osiris-Rex, its seven-year mission. Market launches are pretty much routine things nowadays. I mean, at least once a month, someone somewhere is using a rocket to blast another satellite in orbit to try and make our lives down here a little bit easier. But back at the dawn of the space age, things weren't so simple. Actually, things were really, really complicated. They don't call it rocket science for nothing. One of the most important and revolutionary advancements in the history of rocketry would be the derivation of Tsiolkovsky's rocket equation. And well, uh, how do you think he derived it? Yep, that's right. He used calculus. Let me explain. First, I want to go over what some of these symbols mean. We've got MF, which is mass final, which is the mass of the rocket when it doesn't have any fuel in it. Then we've got MO, which is M original, and that's the mass of the fuel plus the mass of the rocket. We've got VE, which is the velocity of the exhaust, or how fast those hot gases are escaping out of the back of the rocket. And finally, probably most importantly, is delta V. Delta V means how much a rocket can change its velocity over the course of its entire flight. Now, this is an extremely important concept to rocketry, because if we know that the orbital velocity of Earth is 7.2 kilometers a second, and your rocket has 7.2 kilometers a second of delta V, that means that rocket can reach Earth's orbit. A couple more things to note are that the values for delta V and the values for V sub E uh, don't change over the course of the flight. They are constants. All right then, now that we have all of that established, we can get to the fun part, deriving the equation. Our first step is to consider what is a rocket and how exactly does it work? Well, on the most fundamental level, a rocket is just a vehicle that ejects fuel out of its backside to move forward. Since the rocket is moving and it also has a mass, we know that it has momentum, since momentum is just mass times velocity. Now, as the rocket continues to burn fuel, it gains velocity and loses mass. This fuel also has its own momentum, moving in the opposite direction of the rocket. Since the rocket's velocity is changing, we'll call it delta V, because that means change in velocity. And since the fuel is what's causing the change in the rocket's mass, we'll call that the change in mass. If we consider the rocket and its exhaust to be part of a closed system, we can say that the rocket has its own momentum and its exhaust has its own momentum, since both have mass and velocity. Since we said that this is a closed system, we can assume that the sum of the rocket's momentum and its exhaust's momentum should equal out to zero because of something called the conservation of linear momentum. Now is where the fun really starts. If we replace the variables for each momentum, we can see that they add to zero. Now all we need to do is solve for delta V. First, we can just subtract the right side of the equation. So now we have dV times the mass of the rocket is equal to the negative velocity of the exhaust and the mass of the exhaust. The next step is very important. We need to acknowledge that all of this is taking place over a certain amount of time. So we divide both sides of the equation by delta t for a change in time. By doing this, we can then divide both sides by the mass and multiply both sides by the change in time. This gets rid of our delta t values and puts m under dm. Now we have an equation that says that delta v is equal to the negative value of the velocity of the exhaust over a change in mass over the mass of the rocket. This does technically give us an answer for the value of delta V, but it isn't very practical, and it would be easier to just have the initial mass and the final mass of the rocket. To attain this form of the equation, we need to integrate. Now, if you remember from earlier, I said the values for VE and delta V were constants. So when we integrate both sides of this equation, they can move outside of the staff 
because of the constant multiple rule. Now all we need to do is integrate change in m over m from the initial value of m to the final value of m. We already know from calculus class that the integral of the derivative of u over u is the natural logarithm of u. So if we apply the same logic to this situation, we know that the answer is the natural logarithm of m evaluated from the initial value of m to the final value of m. Now we're left with an equation that states that the delta v of a rocket is equal to the negative velocity of the exhaust multiplied by the natural logarithm of the final mass of the rocket over the initial mass of the rocket. We're 90% of the way there, but if you want 100% on Thursday's test, it would be nice if you did not leave a negative value for the velocity of the exhaust. So if we just take the reciprocal of the argument of the natural logarithm, we're left with a statement that says the delta V of a rocket is equal to the velocity of the exhaust multiplied by the natural log of the ratio of the initial mass of the rocket over the final mass of the rocket. This equation was an extremely useful tool for both the vintage rocket scientists of the 60s as well as modern day amateur rocketeers. Researching this has been a very fun and exciting experience for me because it helps me understand and wrap my head around calculus topics as well as learn more about what I'm passionate about and that's space exploration, space travel. As far as my future career interests are concerned, I would like to maybe be a rocket scientist for a company like SpaceX, but that's only if I can't make it to where I want to go. And where I want to go is space. I want to go out there and see this thing for myself. That's why I've been trying to push myself. It hasn't been super comfortable uh, in the last semester, but um, I feel like I've gained a lot of skills and uh, learned a lot from it, more than just calculus. So uh, I enjoyed putting this together and I'm excited for uh, what's to come.